An additional thing I just wanted to show you here is how to change your color bar. Because as I've shown you here, this color bar is exponential. And so it's making a lot of things seem very pink. And it's a lot of things that maybe aren't very big anomalies. Down here we've got a big anomaly, but everything else is also pink. So always have a linear color scale so you can actually be sure about what are big anomalies and what are small anomalies. And so what you're going to do here is you're going to double click on your database in your window here. It's this, you can see it says AGG1. And you can see here's your data in this histogram. And this black line is your color bar. And it's not linear. And so you can use your mouse here to drag up and drag down. Um, but it's not always easy to see what the numbers are. Sometimes you get an idea of what the numbers are. So here we're at the bottom, we're at 28,100. At the top here, we're at 28,600. So if we click on this linear line, let's make this minimum 28,000. Let's make the maximum 29,000. And let's make our interval 100. And let's see what happens. Okay. So you can see it hasn't given us a very good breakdown because my interval was too big. Um, but you can look down here and look, most of your areas become green now. And only at the bottom here have the big anomalies stay pink and blue, which is what you want. So let's just do it again. Let's use the same numbers, 28,000, 29,000. But instead of saying intervals of 100, let's say intervals of 10. Okay, it gives me an error. That's fine. That's fine. It looks a bit prettier now. But again, when you click OK, and you go down here, only your large anomalies at the bottom here have stayed pink and blue. Uh, the rest have turned green, and it's because there's not that big a change here. But maybe this is a mind building, or maybe this is some sort of cultural way. So you actually don't care about it. You do want to see these um, smaller little bumps here being pink and blue. So how you would do that is you double click here, and you would just change your minimum and your maximum. So let's do that. Uh, let's change it. We really want to get what is the value here where most of our data is. So it's at 28,200, 28,400. So it's a very narrow range. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. This is if you want to reload your color scale. You can just click OK and it'll reload to the original values. But we want to make linear 28,200 and 28,400. And let's make a much smaller interval of 5. Okay. okay, and you can see what's happened now is it's made this area even pinker because we know this is a very big anomaly, but it's now picking up these smaller anomalies. And maybe that's what you're interested in. Maybe that's the focus of your field um, study. So <coughs> I suppose it kind of now looks like the original plot, but with a linear color scale, you can be sure that um, of what's being assigned what value. So let's go OK. And now you want to do a color bar. So you go to menu, symbols, color legend bar. What layer are you plotting here? This is day, day three, I think. Give it a title of nanotasers because that's your unit. Click on location so you know where to put it. Click on more. Get rid of your decimal places, zero. Probably going to make it really small. We can come back and fix it. Click OK. No, that's not too bad. OK, and so we've got a linear color scale here. And yeah, just uh, it's probably a bit too big, uh, too many values. So let's right click, go, oh, sorry, you've got to go here, click on your color bar, right click, go color bar, and then you can edit. Go more. Let's make it a bit smaller. I don't know if a height of two might help. There we are. Okay, it's not too much detail. Okay, and then you've got a clear idea of how big your anomalies actually are. And so, yeah. You can tell that these ones here are about 28,400, um, and the blue here, we're going down to 28,200. These ones down here we know are super big, so they, we would just say these anomalies are larger than 28,400.